Hey guys, this is Shane. Welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today, hey, let's talk about how you find books for resale online, whether that's eBay, Amazon, whatever your sales channel is, but with a spotlight on a specific genre, and that would be genealogy, okay? So I've had great success over the years uh, finding and selling genealogy-related books, and you may not really be familiar with that as a genre of books, but it's something that's easy to remember to be on the lookout for, and you get them for decent prices, they, I find that they really, they sell great. So um, before I jump in, I wanna say thank you. Uh, long time viewers, new viewers, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We'll just keep growing the channel and you know, keep making videos and who knows what, sometimes maybe I'll have a curator of the lost, see cool, buy cool shirt, you know, that's, uh, you know, we can start to get out there, but anyway, uh, thanks again for all the stuff and I, I, I sincerely appreciate it. So let's jump in. If you're new to, to, to book selling, if you are, um, you know, if, if you're a long time seller, you know, people always say, well, how do I find books? People get overwhelmed when they go into a, you know, if it's a library bookstore, a thrift store, an estate sale, all these books. And, and quite frankly, you know, there, there's a lot of, you know, chaff with the wheat, right? I mean, you watch videos of people and people pulling books left and right. They're showing all these great things. And probably for every one that they looked at or they bought, they probably looked at 20 or 30 or 50 or 100, right? So there's a lot of books that aren't worth the resale time or value, right? You just you just can't make, it, can't make money off of them. So, so there's different ways you can do it. You can just take a scanner, like on your phone with something like Scout IQ, or you can train your eye. Now I use a hybrid approach. I traditionally was just uh, totally with my eyeball. In the, in the last three months, I started selling to Amazon, so I started using a scanner as well, but I don't scan everything. I, I kind of cherry pick and scan with this kind of hybrid approach. I've got a video out there on that on what I do. It works for me, all right? Some people scan everything. Some people don't use a scanner at all. There's nothing wrong with either way. You do you, do you right? What works for you, you're having success with it, Go for it. So, um, but for me, I think that a great way to find good books is to learn, to always learn. That's part of the, the, the book selling, what's gonna make you successful. There's mechanics of everything, but it's also ha learning what is good. And one thing is genealogy. And that is like, when people are doing family histories, they can, you know, it's, it's this general genealogy, right? Like your ancestry and all this sort of thing. Well, there are lots of books out there on that. And what I'm talking about are a lot of books that pe people, nonprofits, sometimes researchers, transcribed old records into bound volumes and they print those and, and sell them. Now, this was really big in the 70s and 80s. And a lot of things that you find are older because if you're young, you don't remember Microfish. But there was a time in the late 90s where I got into... Um, you know, doing, you know, research on my, my family and I actually trace it back all the way to like the 1790s into Virginia, from Virginia to Tennessee, uh, where I grew up and I, I traced it back. And part of that, I was going up to Baltimore, Maryland a lot, and I would take an early flight out and take the train down and go to Washington, DC, go to the archives and you could go up to their genealogy research department and you could look at census records for counties and they're on microfish. And you've, you, you've seen them on movies. If you never used it, it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I don't even know if they still do that anymore. Maybe I'll be digital now, but somebody has to scrap, transcribe that. But a lot of those records were put into print form with researchers transcribing old records. And these things, people like them. It's nice if you're doing that research to have a bound copy or some people want a bound copy of something that talks about the history of a town and it has their grandfather or great grandfather mentioned in it. Okay, this is the sort of thing that people like. And books you can usually get them for a dollar, two dollars a piece. At least I, I seem to be able to. And they routinely sell for twenty, twenty-five, thirty bucks. I've had some of these books sell for fifty or sixty bucks. So here's some examples of things I've just found recently. What's funny is one of my viewers, Greg, he talked about. Um, he had found some genealogy books. It was like a great haul. And I guess he threw some good karma my way because I just found a lot of these, right? These first 10 or 12 I'm going to show. But here's what I'm talking about. The um, Here's one that's the reconstructed 1790 census of Delaware. Okay. So this is a pamphlet type thing. And, you know, it just has 
people's names in it. But if you're doing genealogy research looking for that ancestor, this gives you a mark of like the township or the county or the area they were in in 1790. And a lot of times it gives the, you know, like the head of household and then the people in the household. So, you know, you can trace it back. Okay, you get your great, great grandfather. And then that's the great, 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 great grandfather was the head of household. So that's an example in pamphlet form. Don't overlook the pamphlets. Here's one somebody had, had just done Delaware Revolutionary Pensioners. Again, you can see it's just typed. Somebody just typed that up into a, just a little booklet, okay? These things sell. Here's one, look here. Listings of inhabitants in 1781, Washington County, Pennsylvania. I found all these together in a library. They were, somebody had been doing research, I guess, and turned them all in. Um, I got all those for like, the pamphlets for like 50 cents each. And then here's one, um, okay, indexes. Indexes to South Carolina wills, okay? Anything with wills. And this, you know, it's just giving people where to look, that sort of thing. Here's an 1800 census of South Carolina. Here's a Rhode Island, Cranston Town Council records, 1754 to 1793. You know, it's, and this is uh, more of a magazine format, but these are great. Here's uh, Vital Records of Delaware. Now, these Newcastle, Delaware books here I'm, I'm showing right now, this, this one and that one, different years of them, right? I've sold these before, and they sell for like 20 bucks easy, and I got these all for like, I think $2 a piece, and they sell all day long uh, for, for $2. There's Vital Records of New Hampshire. And then here's a, this Delaware, this Newcastle County, Delaware, they're like one of the most published, it seems. Like I said, I've sold those before, and another inventory. That gives you kind of an idea of what to look for, okay? Here's another one, uh, a little bit different. Now I got all of these other ones, the, the ones I just showed you, I just got recently at, at a library. Those are all the new ones. Uh, the ones that I've got here are ones I've, I've had that I've got listed that I just pulled off my, my bookshelves behind me to, to show you. But here's marriage bonds, okay, in North Carolina. Now here's one that I had bought just a, maybe a month ago. It's about Mississippi, a place called Belmont. And you can see, I'll show you. You can see it's in this little this county, way up in a corner of Mississippi. But here's, I want to show you why people like these. They can get something like this, and they know maybe an ancestor came to Belmont. And look, in the index, they'll cross-reference people, okay? And they can find their ancestors and say that, hey, they lived in Belmont at that time. Here's one that's more, this kind of crosses into a little bit of the history side of areas too, but I still put it in this genealogy, um, you know, set of books. Here's this one, this Middleton's Days and Deeds. And again, people can, look, it gives like graveyard listings of where people are buried. If you're doing genealogy research, that's a great thing. That's why people want these. And then here's one on like Owen County, Indiana. Um, and this one, again, just to show you, you know, on the indexes, it's got, maybe you can see that it's got like family names and, and specific people. That's why people want them. But all of these books you can use, I'm finding these typically for one to $2, the smaller ones, maybe 50 cents. And they routinely bring 20, 25, 30 bucks. I've had some of them in the past, like I said, bring 50, 60 bucks. So uh, don't, they're easy to, to recognize. It's, it's history, but it really is this genealogy concept of ancestry research and things like that. Um, it's, it's a great, great, uh, easy nonfiction set of books to remember. And I think it's one of those things that if you're, if you're new to the book selling game, this concept of learning genres, this is an easy genre for you to remember. You may see one of these books, like those Newcastle Delawares, like I've seen that before and I bought it and sold it before, so I see it and I'm like, boom. But in general, these others I've never seen before, but that's okay, I understand, I see the genre and I know I have success with it and that's all That's all I need is just to know that, that that's my, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy flip, it's an easy sell, somebody will want that. So. 
it's a great genre to, to start with, to remember, and you can have some great success with it. So anyway, that's it. Uh, hope, hopefully you guys will find lots of these things, give you some good karma the way Greg gave me good karma. And uh, you guys just uh, remember, see cool, buy cool. And uh, remember, it's a great genre, genealogy. It's a specialized history and you buy it, you'll sell it and you'll be, be glad you did. So we'll talk to you then.